Hey guys, welcome to today's video, which is all about the best free note-taking apps. So I've gotten many questions about, you know, Emily, what is the best app that doesn't cost money besides good notes and notability? So I decided to make a special video for you guys. I promised I'd make this like a while ago, but I'm finally doing it after procrastinating. So let's just get into it. So my favorite app I use for note taking is GoodNotes. I personally think it's the best app out there. So I have everything organized into folders. It's very easy to look at and then I have it in to notebooks. Very simple and straightforward organization. But what I like best about GoodNotes is how easy it is to use, like adding pages and changing colors, different brush pens and types of pens. It's also super smooth and there's like no hand palm rejection when you write. Everything flows smoothly. They have highlighters. There are just tons of features with GoodNotes that I just personally love. You can do straight lines or like curved lines and it makes automatic shapes for you which is a really nice bonus feature which I'll be talking about in some of the other apps and they also have like the lasso tool which is definitely a must I definitely need that and you can also add pictures and they're super easy to play around with and edit and like crop and delete and they also have like this huge array of a colors and you can also select your own and you can also have color palettes so these are the things I'll be looking for in the free apps you can also annotate powerpoints and like export and import things super easy which I like about that so I'll also be talking about notability and why it's also a good app and how I'll be comparing it to that so what I like about notability is how you can organize things into nice folders and it's super easy to look at they also have tons of colors to choose from and you can also import your own there are tons of sizes and you can write smoothly and you can just do amazing things with these apps and that's why they cost money so i'll be comparing these paid apps to the free ones and you can also add in images which is a bonus like we want to add in pictures diagrams all that stuff they have tons of paper selection like black paper which is undoubtedly my favorite so I have all these free apps that I just chose except notability just ignore that anyway so the first app we have here is OneNote many of you probably know about it it is free to make an account and it is super easy to use so how you do this is you create a notebook on one side and you can choose different colors for the notebooks kind of like good notes but not really and you can give it a title and inside those are folders which I think is pretty cool and inside each folder is a page and it's super easy to organize and look at and understand which is really why I like OneNote as an alternative they also have tons of color features to choose from they have different pens styles sizes highlighters everything tons of ways to customize your notes and what I also like is the shapes tool which you can just add random shapes especially this graph and 3d graph which is super helpful in your math courses they also have tons of different paper styles but it's kind of limited to only certain types and you can only get your paper color and light colors like these pastel ones which are definitely okay but if you prefer black paper one note doesn't support that really so it's just like a tiny little thing and they also have just like a bunch of different features you can sit there and exploring tons of text options you can insert tables which GoodNotes doesn't even have or OneNote. That's a really good pro. And so when you take notes on it, it's okay. It doesn't have hand palm rejection. So, you know, if your hand is like writing, I don't know, like it might get onto the page. It's very like, it's kind of hard to explain if you don't know what it is. But basically, if your pen and hand are on the page, it's kind of difficult 
for the iPad to sense what is the pen and like sometimes like stuff gets smudged and this app also has the lasso tool which is one of my favorite items I don't know like where I would be in digital note taking if they didn't have a lasso tool because I'd be using whiteout or like an eraser they also have these cool highlighters and it like creates a solid background behind it which is really nice and what I like is there's unlimited real estate to write you have unlimited space and you'll never run out however you can't split screen with the own app only with different apps so that can be annoying for annotating stuff next app is apple notes it's the free one that comes with it and it's relatively okay i would say you can have folders on the side and then notes in between and you can just write things normally. It has like different types of paper, graph paper, and they have different sizes. It's sort of limited, but you know, there is room for customization and different features. They have highlighters and they have tons of different colors at like different opacities if you want, and you can like highlight things. Although I definitely think this is a pretty limited app. I definitely would not recommend this if you are trying to take every single note for your class on this app. I would definitely prefer OneNote because it's much more organized and there's room for customization. Although you can organize everything into nice folders that are easy to view and see and everything into new notes. So if you want good organization, that is a great app. Next is Nebo. So they have like a free version and a paid version. I'm using like the free version because this again is a free note taking app. They have different kinds of paper to choose from. And there's a bunch of different free features such as inserting images, which I mentioned was really nice when you're trying to do that, but you can't really resize the image or you can and I couldn't figure it out because it was kind of hard. And they also have like different sizes to choose from, but very limited sizes and you can test it out here, but I don't really understand the point of that when you could just do that on paper and there are different colors to choose from. I do like how it has this whole color wheel that you can like choose between all the hues like good notes doesn't have that which is really nice the writing feel was pretty nice similar to good notes and notability you can write nicely and it has this weird thing on the top that like wrote along with you so i was like really confused about that so i just turned it off but anyway they have a bunch of different features right here in the pro version but honestly i would not pay for the pro version of this if you can get good notes or notability at like the same cost anyway i fixed the thing at the top you just gotta go into settings but i would really recommend this app if you're just doing like simple note taking not for like every single one of your classes Next is Metamoji Note Lite. So when I first got into app, the uh, the layout was a bit like outdated. It looked kind of like just like simple. It didn't like have that modern feel like a new app, but I did like how many features they had like these adding notebook covers, but the notebook covers look so outdated and like kind of old, which I really wasn't a fan of. And they were kind of blurry too, so. I just found it weird. Anyway, they also have all these different paper styles, like so many. I'm like, when I, I just like stood here for like a moment to look at them all, but they had like grid paper, a calendar, everything. Anyway, it writes very smoothly. They have a lasso tool, which is very nice. And you can also add text if you want, which is also a bonus, but I think most apps here have text. They also have the ability to have notebooks. It's like Notability, the setup where you have all these different folders and you can add notes and have different folder Overall, names. Overall, it's a pretty decent app. So if you would like to use it, yeah, you can go ahead and it's very simple to try. Next is Penbook and Penbook was really weird because it was like this Apple dupe. I'm like so confused. It literally had like the same colors and like set up in the bar as the Apple app. So I don't know how they're doing this. Like is this legal, but whatever. They had tons of different like paper to choose from. They had so many, like, I just like, like, I don't know, like just a lot. That was really nice. 
Good Notes does not have that, nor does Notability. But it's like very limited because you can only get two notebooks maximum. And I just didn't like that, how you can only like write for two subjects. So definitely wouldn't recommend you buy the paid version of this. And they have this weird ombre thing. Like it's nice, but was this really necessary to have like an ombre notebook? I don't know. Like I feel like this could definitely be spent on something else. And you can have like these different formats and it's like, oh, your free limits reached. I can't even have another notebook. So definitely would not recommend this for like one subject if you're gonna use it, but just not a great app in general. Next is Notepad Plus, and this one was not good. I got ads on the app, so I mean, that's how they pay for the app, but it's just not nice. And they only have like five types of paper, which a good selection for people to choose from. And it has very basic features, just like highlighting, writing with the pencil, you know, and they had like this weird lasso tool thing that like did it in like certain shapes. It was kind of complicated and confusing. And they had like an eraser, but you couldn't like erase like the whole word. You would, it would only erase a bit. And you can also write with your finger. So like hand palm rejection isn't very good at that. And you have to erase the whole thing unless you want to use this funky lasso tool. So definitely a weird experience and they also had this weird yellow legal paper and all that stuff and I just didn't really like the app and it was not very good. It was like decent if you want to take like a quick note. Next is this app. This next app is Notes Writer and the form of the app was kind of all right. It was very easy to use, very straightforward, very simple. It's a good app for taking quick notes, but I'm pretty sure there are limitations as they require you to pay if you want like the full version. And I definitely don't like apps which do this because they hide stuff from you and they don't let you have certain features. So that's not good. But they had this cool highlighter thing where it didn't like overlap, which was really nice. And the eraser was also pretty good. They had a lasso tool, which was pretty nice, but it like highlighted the whole thing, which wasn't nice. And you can also draw shapes. And I do like this app if you do want to draw diagrams. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's because the highlighter does not overlap when you draw on top. So you can like fix your little mistakes and everything will be nice. It's not like good notes or notability where it like highlighting twice on something duplicates it, which is quite nice. Anyway, after trying out all those different apps, uh, I must say I was sort of impressed, but like not really by the free apps, but I mean, you get what you pay for. But overall, I would choose OneNote as the winner of this. But if you saw something along the way that you did like, by all means, go ahead and download it. I just personally think with organization and the layout and the capability of OneNote, it's definitely an app I would go for if I did not have good notes or notability. But in all said, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>